It's certainly not optimal, but the Hoosiers are going to play Ohio State to open up week one of the 2023 college football season. Let's talk to Locked On Buckeyes host Jay Stevens about the game. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Thursday, everybody. This is a special crossover episode, Locked On Hoosiers, Locked On Buckeyes, both part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. I'm one of your hosts over at Locked On Hoosiers, Jacob, joined by Locked On Buckeyes host, Jay Stevens. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs Helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Terms and conditions apply. This is a lot earlier than we typically have this conversation about Ohio State and Indiana. We're heading into week one of the season with a Big Ten game. Let's start there. I mean, it's to me, it's still so odd to have week one Big Ten games. What are your thoughts on them and playing a, a conference team right out of the bat? I'd much rather play Indiana, Jacob, than playing Minnesota week one like the Buckeyes did a couple <laughs> years ago. So not trying to throw shade or just say Indiana's not a good football team, you. but Indiana's not a good football team. So it's very much a thing where if it has to happen, I'd much rather play Indiana over, or maybe Northwestern. Well, maybe not because they almost won last year over almost any other uh, team in the Big Ten. No, conference games are odd. Road test and a, and a conference game, that's odd as well. Um, with the Buckeye schedule that is harder than most, I understand why there is a road test week one. And of course, Indiana's also, I do believe, Jacob, they've been open to playing um, week one conference games. Been eight, the Buckeyes and who just played, I think, week one, I think it was 2017 in Bloomington, if I get the year correct. And then yep. I know they, there may have been a, the same year or a different year where they played like a midweek game to open a season, whatever it is. Like, I understand why the Hoosiers are doing what they're doing. Plus, they're on CBS week one against, like, CBS first game on a like, first Big Ten game in a while. It's the Buckeyes, and it's the Hoosiers. So, Hoosiers get a big spotlight, national television, not Big Ten Network, against Ohio State. Going to probably have more eyeballs on this game than any other game the Hoosiers play. That was at 2017, a Thursday night against Ohio State in Bloomington. Super bizarre. I forgot that was on a Thursday. Uh I don't know how I really feel about it. Uh, I would rather play Illinois than I'd rather play Ohio State (laughs) last year. So it's a mutual feeling, but these haven't been kind to Indiana. They played at Iowa the year that they were ranked and there were all those expectations and they got throttled. And so I know Tom Allen doesn't love it. And IU seems to routinely be a team that doesn't, not every big 10 team has this. I don't love the idea, but realistically, there's a lot of ways you could spin this positively for Indiana. You're facing an Ohio State team on the road right away with a new quarterback that uh, you just had a quarterback battle. I don't know how much that's going to help things for Indiana, but it is about if there was a time to play Ohio State, it would probably be week one with a new quarterback on the road. Uh, it's It would be their best shot, I think, to take down the Buckeyes. Let's kind of to that point. I mean, fall camp's over now. We're we're heading into to week one of the season. Both of our programs are, went through quarterback battles uh, that we'll talk a little bit more in depth about in, in the coming segments. But what are just kind of the vibes around Ohio State right now coming out of that fall camp and, and heading into this game? If you look at just the quarterback battle specifically in that one there, People were a lot of people were saying it's going to be Devin Brown, the sophomore quarterback. Some were saying it's going to be third year quarterback Kyle McCord. And a lot of people were not open to even going one way or another difference than their original opinion. And they were doing this without seeing really any practice outside of the two practices during fall camp. The first two that fans could go to in the spring game. Fans have not really seen any fans haven't seen anything. And mm-hmm. there were only 500 practice, 500 attenders, uh, spectators at Ohio State's first two practices of fall camp. 
And so for the Buckeye fans to say, well, we know what's going to happen. No, you don't. Even people that <laughs> are there with the media, they're like, we don't know what's going to happen. And even the media is somewhat split between Devin Brown and Kyle McCord. Ultimately, it is McCord. We'll touch on that later on. But that's been the one thing, like, make a decision and stick with it. And I hope that Ryan Day eventually goes at this decision and sticks with it. Because if he goes backwards and changes it, that's a whole other can of worms that you're having to deal with. But defensively, excitement, man. Excitement about this team. Excitement about the players. Um, excitement about the guys that are there. And uh, this could be a special season. Um, excited to get it kicked off. Like I said, once again, CBS Week 1. That's huge, man. Because yeah. the Buckeyes haven't played. I don't, I don't know. The last time the Big Ten was on CBS um, when it wasn't like a bowl game or something like that way, way back in the day when the CBS did um, big time, big time bowl games. So defensively optimistic quarterback wise, uh, still kind of in a wait and see mode. Cause we don't know what to expect from a cord or even Devin Brown. Both will play on Saturday against the Hoosiers. Yeah. Indiana is in a weird situation in that they had a quarterback battle where openly the, the coaches said nobody really separated themselves and uh, a decision was made. Tom Allen hasn't revealed it. He loves to play this game in which uh, he refuses to name a starter until the last minute possible. So it's a guessing game. I'll give you my guess later on. But uh, outside of the quarterback battle, this is a, a really interesting fall camp. I think there's been a lot of positive vibes coming out of it. The offensive line has been a mess in recent years and in Indiana. Uh, made the offensive line change, brought in Bob Bostad from Wisconsin, which if you're looking for an offensive line coach, there's fewer places better than, than going to Wisconsin or getting someone from Wisconsin. And uh, the defense has been completely reshaped. There's been some, some positive uh, kind of talk and optimism about the defensive line specifically. And they have a really deep receiver room. Jalen Lucas is an all American. I, I, can't believe it took me that long to, to mention him, but uh, he was an All-American kick returner last season who is going to be a lot bigger part of this offense this year. So there's kind of an excitement and optimism. We'll see how much that excitement optimism stays around after an Ohio State game in week one, but I do think this is an interesting season for the Hoosiers. Uh, it's kind of a, I won't say a make or break season for Tom Allen because his buyout is still going to be really big and He's going to be around next season, but things are, are kind of tailing in the wrong direction, especially considering where IU was in that COVID season and where the expectations were. Uh, it's gone downhill since then. So I think this is a really important season for the program to get back on track and really look like there's upward momentum again. Coming out of fall camp, there's upward momentum. So it's just a matter of kind of keeping that throughout the season. With IU, the expectation is maybe, hopefully, make a bowl game. The expectation, I assume, with uh, Ohio State is national title. Is that, as always, the focus with you guys and the expectation this year? Yeah, national title, beat your rival, win the conference. That hasn't changed. It's not going to change. And uh, I firmly, I really, 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 really hope that that game, November 25th, Thanksgiving weekend, it gets the Wolverines, <laughs> that that is a different outcome than it has in the past couple of years. Uh, my wife and I were recently talking about um, the aftermath of that game and um, just kind of the way that I was acting and uh, how I was not really talking much, really quiet, um, really sad moment in my life. And uh, so I don't want to do, I don't want to do that again, Jacob. I don't. <laughs> Listeners here, watchers of Locked with Buckeyes, they understand that I am annoyed with the way that that game has been played the past couple of years. So, yeah, the national championship is there. That's the expectation. Um, win the conference, that's an easier expectation. Penn State is going to be tough. Um, yeah. I'm going to lie to you. Wisconsin is going to be tough. Um, Notre Dame is going to be really, really tough. So there's some tough games in the schedule. But still, the, the expectation is beat your rival, win the conference, win the natty. That hasn't changed. We're going to dive in a little bit deeper to both of these teams. We'll start off first here in a few moments with uh, Jay talking to me about the Hoosiers and where we stand coming out of fall camp uh, before I talk to him. We'll do all that here in just a moment. These days, guys, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager 
for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. You guys know how much we love LinkedIn Jobs around here. Uh, they help you find the right people faster and for free. It's real simple. You guys can head on over to linkedinjobs.com slash college. Create your free job posting. Add your job, the purple hashtag hiring frame, to your LinkedIn profile. It spreads the word that you're hiring. They have simple tools like screening questions to really simplify, expedite the process to make sure you're talking to the right people, qualified candidates, uh, so you can prioritize who you want to interview, who you want to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. College football season is here, and this season, Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team Every day, find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it. Jacob, we discuss the Buckeyes, and that's the team that's been in the really the the main one of the bigger topics of the offseason, the quarterback battle at Ohio State. Will it be Kyle McCord? Will it be Devin Brown? And I was recently watching Big Ten Today. And two of the first press conferences they played was Ohio State and the next one was Michigan. One about a quarterback, one about NIL. And so there's those two schools are going to get a lot of the attention. It's not been the same way for Indiana as far as a national conversation. The quarterback battle at Indiana, I thought it was odd. Well, good for Taven Jackson to go back, basically go back home. Yeah. But I didn't think he was going to be able to win the job this year. Is it possible that he could be QB1 for the, for the Hoosiers on Saturday? I, my bet is that he is QB1 on Saturday. Tom Allen guards these things like nuclear codes, this this quarterback battle and the decision that they make. Um, and so it's it's a battle between Taven Jackson, who, brother of Trace Jackson Davis, yeah. for those of you that, that may not know, uh, came back from Tennessee, transferred in. Uh, during the, the winter, there was a – I think it might have been the Wisconsin basketball game – He's front row with Tom Allen as Trace is dunking all over the place. It was a really cool day, really cool moment. Uh, but he comes to to Indiana. The Hoosiers had some things not go their way, basically, in terms of injuries. Dexter Williams was a quarterback at the end of last season. Looked really promising, looked really good, and then had a pretty horrific injury against Purdue. And he's out for now. This quarterback battle has multiple layers to it because right now it's Taven Jackson versus Brendan Sorsby, two redshirt freshmen. Sorsby played a little bit last season for Indiana, but both Connor Bazelak and Jack Tuttle transferred out after last season. Uh, Sorsby and Taven have been the two kind of battling it out. Whoever wins that is going to be the quarterback for the first probably three, four, five weeks. Dexter Williams is going to be healthy at some point this season, and then you have another decision to make as to whether you bring him in or keep whoever you've had. So it's kind of a quarterback battle in stages for uh, Indiana, but stage one is Taven versus Brendan Sorsby. My thoughts always kind of been if you have someone transfer in as kind of this high-profile transfer, you would think that there would be an idea that he would be the favorite to win the quarterback battle. and so. That's my thought process. He also fits what Walt Bell wants. And when Indiana had its most success last season, it was a mobile quarterback who could get out of the pocket, make some plays, some option, uh, some speed options, some RPOs, whatever it may be, just having that versatility. That's very much something Taven can do more than Brendan Sorsby. So my thought is that it's going to be Taven uh, week one, but 
that's a guess because Tom Allen won't reveal it at all. And the quarterback week one against Ohio State may not be the quarterback at the end of the season against Purdue. So there's a, a lot of things that are going to, to happen in that quarterback position this year. Let's go ahead and stick with the offense here. We hear about the quarterback battle that has been very intense in Bloomington, yeah. Indiana this offseason. What about the rest of the offense? What can we expect from them on Saturday? Well, Jalen Lucas, as I mentioned, is going to be the big name. Uh, he last year returned, I believe, three kickoffs for touchdowns, uh, was All-American as a true freshman, uh, is a kick returner. He was a running back as well. And there were a lot of calls last season for him to get the ball more, to be involved more in the offense. And Indiana, I thought, was a little slow in getting him involved. That has not been the case during fall camp. They have been adamant that he is going to be involved in this offense. He'll line up at running back. There's going to be two running back backfields. There's going to be him in the slot, him at wide receiver. They're going to move him all over the place. He's IU's most explosive uh, kind of dynamic player offensively. You have Cam Camper as the number one wide receiver. I thought he was on pace for an all Big Ten season last year before he went down with injury uh, about midway through the Big Ten season. He should be back. He might be on a bit of a kind of pitch count, snap count uh, this, this week and maybe the first couple of weeks, but uh, a very talented receiver. Um, and there's a couple transfers they've had come in. EJ Williams from Clemson who his freshman season at Clemson was a productive wide receiver. Injuries and stuff kind of shuffled him down the depth chart. He transfers to Indiana and had a, a strong fall camp. Dequise Carter from Fordham uh, was really, really good at Fordham. So it's kind of a matter of can he make that jump from a school like Fordham to Indiana and uh, remain productive. All the questions, though, kind of are on this offensive line, which has been – honestly awful for the last yeah. two seasons yeah, and really derails all of that. If, if your offensive line is bad The I mentioned, they brought in Bob Bostad from Wisconsin. They have a lot of continuity there, which uh, kind of could go both ways. If you've had a bad offensive line and they keep coming back, yeah, does that mean they're going to stay bad? It sounds like there's been a, a lot more production. They, they, they've looked a lot better. I should yeah. say during fall camp and, there's a lot better feeling about that offensive line this year, but that's going to be kind of the, um, the, the, the focus of everything in that there were a lot of times last year, there were debates on who should be quarterback, who should be this. Well, when your quarterback can't do a three step drop without having <laughs> two guys meet him in the backfield, it really doesn't matter who it's going to be. And that's, that's going to be one of the biggest focuses for Indiana this week. Love the, the things we hear about the offense. Well, for Hoosiers fans, that is, defensively will we see improvements from the Hoosiers on Saturday couldn't have been much worse than it was last <laughs> season. uh we, I thought the defense was going to be a, a positive last season and they were not uh to be blunt they they had a lot of talent had a lot of experience I don't really know what happened and it all kind of went awry and a lot of people left a lot I mean a lot of experience means a lot of graduation a uh, number of guys transferred there was uh, – realistically, I think there might be two people that are starters returning this season, and that would be it. So a lot of the positions, I'm not really sure. The secondary is wide open. There could be any number of people. I'm not even sure I could give you a guess right now as to who is going to be starting in that secondary, which is suboptimal. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I know Noah Pierre is going to start at the, the Husky position, which is like a – a safety linebacker hybrid okay. position. But outside of that, there's a lot of inexperience, a, not, a lot of transfers, a lot of question marks. The name to watch is going to be Andre Carter, who was a transfer from Western Michigan, defensive lineman that everybody is, has raved about when they have saw him. He, is, he just has the body of a defensive lineman, 6'5", 270. Uh, he was super productive at Western Michigan. There were a lot of schools after him, and Indiana landed him. Everybody that's seen him, whether it's IU coaches, whether it's the Big Ten Network when they came in for their yeah. kind of media session or whatever for a day, everybody has raved about how good he's looked. I think he's going to be really, really, really good for the Hoosiers this season. He's going to be one of the biggest names to watch, but 
I struggle to give you many more than that because I don't entirely know what this defense is going to look like. Um, wholesale changes really on that side of the ball, which on, on one hand, as I mentioned earlier, it's good to get Ohio State week one, but that's assuming that you have all your answer, your questions answered. And Indiana definitely on the defensive side of the ball does not. We hit, we get to hear from Jacob about what the Hoosiers are bringing to the table. Now it's time to turn the table around to have Jacob and the Hoosiers fans learn about the Buckeyes, what the Buckeyes are going to bring to Bloomington, Indiana on Saturday afternoon. We get to hear that next. So just like with Indiana, Ohio State has a quarterback battle, or had one, I should say, that lasted basically the entirety of fall camp. Unlike Indiana, you named a starting quarterback. Absurd to me that Tom Allen won't do this, but uh, you named your starting quarterback earlier this week. Kyle McCord is going to at least start the game at quarterback. Um, Tom Allen said earlier in the week that they're preparing for two quarterbacks. I don't know if he specifically meant he thought two quarterbacks would play, do you think two quarterbacks would play? And what's kind of your thoughts on, on McCord being named the starter? So, yes, I do think two quarterbacks will play. I would have expected two quarterbacks to play, even if there weren't wasn't a quarterback battle, just because I don't think this is going to be a contest. Jake, I'm not trying to be rude, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you understand. Um, but, no, but um, I do also think that two quarterbacks will play because Ryan Day has discussed that and hinted at that over the past few weeks that may take two quarterbacks into the season. This this battle might continue in weeks one, two, and three. Hopefully not week four because that could be a loss as the Buckeyes have a game against the Fighting Irish that week of the season. Kyle McCord, six foot three, about 210, 215, recently heard um, that um, he's his pull-up game is intense. Um, 20 plus, well, I think I heard 25 plus pull-ups at one time, and I'm like, wait. Excuse me? Is that real? And the upper body strength is going to be needed um, because he really hasn't played football consistently at quarterback since high school. And in that stretch, he ended up having an injury. And so now you're starting quarterback at Ohio State following Stroud, um, who did phenomenal things as QB1 for the Buckeyes. His skill set is different. He brings a different mindset, different mindset to the table. His dad was also a college quarterback, so he could actually – get learn from dad and dad could help him prepare for this moment. All I have to say this, I have no idea what to expect. Like <laughs> I said earlier, like the practices are very, very tight and closed um, to the media in Columbus. Um, fans got to go to two fall uh, camp practices this year for the first two, which is rare. You got to go to the spring game. McCord played. Devin Brown was hurt. So even if it was Brown or McCord, I think I know more about what to expect from McCord than Brown. However, I still don't have the the ideal handle that I want on this situation because I just haven't had my eyeballs on McCord throwing the football enough to be able to provide a well-educated opinion about his game. So there will be two quarterbacks playing. That would be regardless of the outcome of the game. Ryan Day is going to play two. And there's a good chance, Jacob, that this quarterback battle goes into week two and week three of the season. I'm not a fan of it, but that's where things sit right now with Ryan Day and the Buckeyes. I'm interested what this offense in general is going to look like because in the last couple of seasons uh, with Stroud, with Fields, it's been an offense that uh, through the air can just in moments score. It's a team that still has a lot of talent with re uh, receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously the big name among them. It's also a team that has a lot of talent in the running back room with a new quarterback and so much kind of uncertainty there. What are you expecting this offense to look like this year? I do expect it to be a little bit more balanced than normal. The Buckeyes have been very fortunate to have players like Fields and Stroud under Ryan Day's watch as head coach of the Buckeyes to where you don't have to rely on the run as much as you would other times. However, 2019 days, first year, 2000 yard rusher and JK Dobbins yep. Fields didn't really throw for, I, I think he threw for 3,200 yards passing yards that year. So it's like as good of a thrower as he was, he wasn't asked to do a whole lot of saying, Hey, we need you to throw 4,000 plus 4,500 plus just to win a lot of games. You could rely on the backs. I do think you're going to go back to that. There is a lot, some inexperience on the offensive line. New center, redshirt freshman at Carson Hensman. 
transfer left tackle Josh Simmons from San Diego State. And then Josh Fry, who's been around for a while but hasn't had his number called just because of the talent at Ohio State at tackle has been so elite. I really am kind of hoping that. And I do believe that you're, you're going to see more running of the ball early in the season. Now, bigger games down the road, Notre Dame, Penn State, et cetera, et cetera. You might see McCord or Brown, whenever they get into the rhythm of the game, throw more and utilize Harrison Jr. and Abuka and maybe Julian Fleming and Cade Stover and maybe even Cardinal Tate, a freshman receiver who's got a lot of attention lately. You might see more of that later, but early in the season, especially when you want to help get a quarterback really more acclimated to the football, use the backs. Travis yeah. Henderson, Mayan Williams, Chip Trainum's going to get a going to get touches, um, and then the wild cards, the guys who I think one guy who I think should play, who might not play a lot, is Dallin Hayden, and then Evan Pryor, who was hurt a year ago. What do you expect to get? It's literally TBD to be determined. The you mentioned earlier that the defense there was some excitement there. It's felt like the defense has kind of been the part that's let Ohio State down in the really big games. The offense has showed up, but the defense has struggled in those Michigan games. In the Georgia game, giving up 42 points last year. Is there excitement about this defense this year? And where does that kind of stem from? There's excitement about the defense. A lot of it comes from the talent that has just been recruited, but it also gets elevated. That excitement gets elevated because of, uh, for two reasons a couple transfers and a couple guys that are in state products that are really, really good. One of them is not going to start, but could be a starter at the end of the season or just could be a rotational piece at linebacker and CJ Hicks. Sonny Styles is going to start probably in that nickel role, but more so in a heavier set. And then you also have a couple transfers in Taiwan or Taiwan Malone from Ole Miss that is former teammate and still current teammate, Davidson Igmanos in that corner. Those two guys there, Malone brings more of an SEC body and mindset at D-tackle. Igmanos brings that SEC mindset at corner. And I'm expecting other guys on defense, Tui Malowau and Jack Sawyer and Kenyatta Jackson Jr. and Michael Hall Jr. and Ty Leak Williams. I'm expecting a lot of these guys to really be great. I can't forget Lathan Ransom. Lathan Ransom is one of those guys. He's played all three safety positions, will be the starting strong safety this year. And I firmly think in a pinch, in an injury case, or situationally in a game, he can rotate in any safety spot. Now, the Buckeyes do use and call their nickel corner uh, a safety and so that's why I said they use a three safety system just based off their terminology. Yeah. Lake Ransom could play any of that. Not the best cover guy, but he can play it. And if needed, can make big plays there as well. So expectations for the defense are not just because Jim Knowles is in year two and the narrative year two under Jim Knowles is things get better. That's true. But also the talent at Ohio State is so good. It makes people believe the defense can be special in 2023. There, as I mentioned with IU and this being the best chance to play them, getting Ohio State's defense, getting a chance at a, a redshirt freshman, no matter who it's going to be, is going to be a great opportunity for that defense and probably is going to make for a long night, a long day for the Hoosiers on that side of the ball. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams look kind of regardless of the scoreline. I think, as you can tell, both of us are assuming this is going to be a, a pretty easy Pretty big Ohio State win, but doesn't mean there's still a lot of answers that we can't get from this, uh, regardless of what the scoreline says. So excited to see what this game looks like for both teams. As always, you guys, thank you for making us your first listen, whether it's Locked on Hoosiers, whether it's Locked on Buckeyes. We appreciate you guys. Be sure you are subscribed to the show, wherever it may be at, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. Both have YouTube channels that you guys can subscribe to and catch uh, Locked on College Football Live on Fridays, every Friday this season. Leave those ratings and reviews. It helps us out immensely. But other than that, appreciate you, Jay, for, for hopping on and uh, doing this crossover episode. And uh, I say I wish you the best. I, I hope that you have a bad week one and a good rest of the season. But nonetheless, uh, appreciate you hopping on as always. And we will talk to you guys soon.